The village. You crawl out of the den of rats. Carefully, you stumble ahead and up a hilltop allowing you to see the village of Lundar. The houses are burning. The black blades are everywhere. They have slowed down now. They are searching methodically for survivors. A woman appears from her hiding place behind some shrubbery and tries to flee. One of the black blades notices her. He pulls something from a strap hook on his back. It is a three-bolter, a dreaded form of triple crossbow used by the black blades. He points it at the woman. Then she falls to the ground. Less than a second later, the thwack of the three-bolter reaches your hiding place. A group of black blades are gathering on the outskirts of the village. One of them has long, fair hair. He signals for them to search the village. They split up and ride in different directions. A couple of riders head in your direction. You turn around and run into the forest. You run, and you keep running, and you have no sense of time or of exhaustion. You just run until you collapse. Black Blades! You are important, more important than anything else. You wake up with a jolt to the sound of birds chirping. The sun is high in the sky. You look around and see that you are in the clearing in the forest. The village, the attack, Helmar, Vijarki, it all comes back to you. Why were you attacked by black blades? What was Bijarki talking about? The entire village is gone. Your feelings are mixed. You have always been an outsider in the village. You have had to fight for everything. But it was your home. And Bijarki, he sacrificed himself for you. You remember Bijarki saying something about heading upwards, finding a vantage point, and looking for a large oak tree. You can hear the sound of a brook. The terrain is sloping, and you can proceed upwards or go towards the brook. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go towards the brook, because water. We're probably dying of thirst, especially after everything we've been through. You walk towards the sound of water. As expected, you find a small brook. There is dense vegetation on the other side, so the only way to go is back again. Uh, we'll go ahead and drink from the brook. You sit and drink from the brook. You had forgotten how thirsty you were, and you quench your thirst ravenously. Wait, there is something down in the water. You pick up an item. It looks like a key of sorts. We'll take a look at that rusted key, examine. The key has an intricate shape, and it does not seem to be made for a regular lock. Huh. Okay. Take a closer look at the brook. The brook runs from a place further up in the terrain and continues downwards. The water looks clean and clear. Oh, we should have probably looked at the brook before we actually took some water. <laughs> Going back to the entrance. You are in the clearing of the forest in which you woke up after the escaping the village. You can hear the sound of a brook, the terrain is sloping, and you can proceed upwards or go towards the brook. We're gonna start heading upwards into the terrain. You move upwards and end up on the top of a tall hill with a view of a far stretch of Arvid Forest. Behind you, you see a column of smoke far away. It must be the smoke from your burned down village. Ahead of you, the forest stretches on. and the distance, you see the mountains of Merc looming. You notice a large oak tree a fair distance away protruding above the trees. There is a path further ahead that leads in that direction. Well, let's go ahead and go down to the path then. You find the path and you follow it far into the forest. Arvid Forest is dense, lush, 
and the trees are tall, you wander along the path for a while, hoping to get a glimpse of a large oak tree Bajarki was talking about. Further ahead, the underbrush grows thick, and a path almost disappears. Now let's continue along the path. You make it through the dense vegetation and continue down the forest path. After a while, steep hills appear on both sides of the path. Suddenly, two men step out from behind a tree onto the path in front of you. You hear a sound behind you. Another two men have appeared behind you. Hmm, says one of the men as he looks up you up and down. They don't look like the type of people that one becomes friendly with. The man draws his sword. Nice knife. And what's that you've got around your neck? A piece of jewelry, perhaps? He continues nodding to one of the other men. Brigands, you cannot escape. Hand it all over, then we might spare you, says the brigand, and points his sword at you. Mm. Four men. I'm kind of wounded. There's no shot at this. You just gotta hand, hand it over. Let the fates play it out. Reluctantly, you start removing the knife from your belt. Too slowly, apparently, you hear a step behind you and feel a hard strike against your back, knocking you to the ground. The first brigand places a foot on your chest and points his sword at your throat. This will be faster, he says, and raises his sword. It feels as if time stands still. You look up at your executioner. Everything is quiet. Then the brigand falls over backward, as if the sword was too heavy. He stays down. You hear the sound of another body dropping. And again, you look around, confused. Only one brigand is still standing. You get to your feet quickly. A figure approaches from the hillside. It is an elderly man, dressed in skins and wool, the colors of the forest. He moves quickly, approaching the final brigand without hesitation. He has a long, narrow object in his hand. A staff? Or a blow tube? Having been entirely paralyzed, the final brigand now breaks out of his trance. He runs ahead and takes the sword from the fallen brigand. Run! Scram! I'll spare you, the elderly man yells at the brigand. The brigand pauses for a moment before raising his sword and storming towards the man, roaring. With a movement as swift as lightning, the elderly man draws a long curved dagger from a holster on his back. The brigand swings his sword, but the elderly man dodges with an almost elegant movement that continues towards the brigand and past him. The brigand grabs his throat, blood suddenly pulsing out, then he falls to the ground. Fool, the elderly man mutters. <laughs>